All right, folks, it's been recently announced that come spring 2021, Columbia Pictures and Mattel Films will be releasing the remake of this iconic franchise. So what better time than now to cover the 80s classic version of Masters of the Universe? Welcome everyone to another episode of Castle Classic Movies, a show that provides recaps on all the favorites from your childhood. I'm your host, Chris Castillo. Now without further ado, let's get started. Masters of the Universe is a 1987 sci-fi fantasy film starring Dolph Lundgren, Frank Langella, and Courtney Cox. It's based on the 1983 Mattel toy line of the same name, which then spawned the iconic TV show produced by Filmation. It's the story of two teenagers who meet the mighty He-Man after he arrives on Earth and goes on a mission to save the universe from his nemesis, the evil Skeletor. On the planet of Eternia, Skeletor's army seizes Castle Grayskull, captures the sorceress, and plans to add her power to his own in the next Moonrise. Skeletor's arch enemy, the warrior He-Man, aka Ivan Drago, I must break you. and his crew rescue Gwildor, a locksmith who looks like a walking hemorrhoid. He reveals that Skeletor has acquired his invention, the cosmic key that can open portals to anywhere by utilizing sound keys. With Gwildor's remaining prototype of the key in hand, Ivan Drago and his crew travel to the castle. They attempt to free the sorcerers, get their asses handed to them, and are forced to flee through a portal, transporting them through the vastness of space. Where do they land? California. The key is misplaced on their arrival and discovered by two teenagers. High school students Julie, aka Monica Geller, and her boyfriend Kevin. While experimenting with the device, they accidentally send out a signal that allows the bad guys to track them down. Kevin, an aspiring musician, mistakes the key for a synthesizer, because it's the 80s, and takes it to a music store. Skeletor's henchmen arrive and chase Monica Geller until our Swedish behemoth comes to save the day. The henchmen, now defeated, return to Grayskull. Scully's pissed, mercs one of his dudes, <laughs> and sends the rest of them back to Earth under his second in command, Eva Lynn. Why do I feel like she should be walking around with a horse crop? Oh, here she comes. She's a man eater. Unable to find Monica Geller, Kevin runs into Detective Lubick investigating the disturbance created from the previous battle and confiscates the key. Immediately afterwards, Eva Lynn captures and interrogates the team for the key's location with a mind-controlled collar. And you're getting punished now. Monica Geller and crew release Kevin from the sex collar before they go after Detective Lubick and the key. They arrive at the music store where the bad guys show up and another battle of the buns ensues. The bad guys win, capture the good guys, and Monica Geller is mortally wounded. Ivan Drago surrenders to save his friends and returns to Eternia as Skeletor's prisoner. He demands that Ivan Drago kneel before him for all of the Eternians to witness. Bend the knee. Ivan Drago refuses and takes a couple in the back. When the moon rises, our homeboy is still standing and Scully absorbs the power of the universe, declaring himself the master of the universe with one hell of a giant helmet. I can't breathe in this thing! Back on Earth, Wildor, still suffering from a full body diaper rash, repairs the cosmic key, and Kevin recreates the tones necessary to create a gateway to Eternia. Excellent! The group is then transported, where they begin battling Skeletor's forces, and the cheesiness continues. Scully and Ivan Drago do battle until our boy defeats Scully, restoring him to his normal state. Ivan Drago then knocks his nemesis into a vast pit below, giving us one of those iconic slow motion scenes. No. The freed sorcerer supplies a mystic neosporin to Monica Geller's wound. Hailed as a hero for his bravery, Detective Lubick decides to remain in Eternia and bag some Eternian hoes. I mean, seriously, would you go back to paying taxes in a 9 to 5? And the portal is open to send the Earthlings home. In the post credit scene, Skeletor emerges from the water at the bottom of the pit, saying, I will be back. Haha, <laughs> no, you won't because this movie was a box office flop. 
grossing 17 million worldwide against a budget of only $22 million. Though the movie did suck, the cartoon and the toy sales sold like crack in the 1980s. Mattel made $38 million in its first year, and by 1984, it had earned over a billion dollars. If you want to watch this classic again, or for the first time, you can find it on Hulu, Sling TV, or Stars with subscription. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of CCM, so don't forget to like or subscribe to this show so you can get more updates on movies that came out when car phones were still a thing. Get the whole world in your hands. Only at Radio Shack, the technology store. And if you have a movie in mind or simply want to share your thoughts, kindly leave them in the comment section down below. Until next time, viewers, you stay safe and stay classy.